and my fellow friends, welcome to the program Careers Connect from Dubai. It's a DPS network presentation. My name is Neelam Bedi Son. I'm an HR consultant and I'm into industry from last more than two decades and I have my working presence in Delhi and Dubai. Today, in the competitive world, with the pandemic hitting us in different times, in, in difficult times, hope can be a powerful force and source of reassurance. Maybe there's no actual magic in it, but when you know what you hope for most and hold a light, a, like a light with you, you can make things happen almost like magic. Such is the challenge we are facing today with our students who are badly affected by the closure of schools and colleges at large and online teaching has become the need of the day. Also, the students face scores of career options that are overwhelming and even confusing. Here we at Career Connect help the students make an informed choice by facilitating their interaction with top notch professionals in 500 careers. The aim of this talk show is to understand the education required for these careers, the trials and the tribulations these professionals underwent, and the sacrifices they made, and the net result of their career decision, even if made in different times, circumstances, and environment. Now I invite Mr. Rajiv Soni, the man behind this informative program, Careers Connect, to say a few words. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, good evening, Dr. Balbir Singh. Thank you so much, sir, for coming. Thank you, Neelamji. Uh, so the genesis of Career Connect uh, is in the year 2014, when a prominent school in Gurgaon had invited me to give a talk uh, uh, on the careers, on the various in the careers. And I thought to myself, how can one person be uh, so bountifully enjoyed that he, should, he or she can speak on, let's say, 30, 40, 50 different careers? So I invited uh, 20, 25 of my childhood friends, uh, all from a particular school, namely DPS, and uh, invited them to talk on their profession. So that's how this program actually uh, took up uh, in the year 2014. And also in 2014, I invited five people from around the globe via the internet. So Zoom was not even, uh, even there perhaps in the year 2014. Anyway. So that, has, uh, that is the background. And today we have the renowned uh, cardiologist, Dr. Balbir Singh. And uh, I think with these few words, I hand over the mic back to Nilamji. Thank you, Nilamji. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rajiv. Okay. Today we have with us Dr. Balbir Singh, a renowned interventional cardiologist and cardiac electrophysiologist, uh, a man with five C's, competence, confidence, connection, caring, compassion, and character. The man who actually played with hearts from last 34 years through his surgical expertise in Okumun. He's a Dipside 1977 batch, which we are very proud of. And he's an MBBS MD from Medical College, uh, Molana Azad Medical College, and later completed his DM cardiology at GB Pant Hospital. He joined as a faculty as, at the prestigious All India Institute of Medical Sciences, Subsequently, he practiced at Batra Hospital, later joined at Escorts Heart Institute in the Trust Apollo Hospital, New Delhi, Medhanta, the Medicity Hospital, Gurgaon. Dr. Bilbeer is at present the chairman and head of cardiology, Pan Max Healthcare, Max Hospital, Saket, New Delhi. He's a pioneer in the field of cardiology and his, his work on some highly complex coronary angioplasties and, class, and cardiac care of the sick, won him great facilitations and honors from time to time. He's been awarded some great prestigious national and international awards. He was honored with the Padma Shri by the President of India in 2007. He's a President of Indian Heart for Rhythm Society and has served as a Secretary of Cardiology, Society of India. He's been invited as faculty to several international meetings and he's been advisory scientific panel of Asia Pacific Heart Rhythm Society and has organized several workshops with international faculty in the field of cardiology and contributed several papers in national and international journals. Presently, he's on the steering committee of three large multinational, multi-center international uh, trials. Let's welcome today who, a man who gave up his life to save others, uh, Dr. Babir Singh. So welcome on board today. Thanks, Neela. <clears throat> and
thanks Rajiv for having me on this uh, forum. And uh, Neelam, thanks for the kind words that you had already said. <laughs> but uh, as I was discussing with Rajiv, that it's a great forum to have and people should utilize this forum uh, to the hilt because when I was uh, completing my schooling, I was very unsure where to go and how to go. So there was no guidance, there were no um, clues as to how we go to it. So we just looked at what my father said or what my uncle said and uh, took our uh, life in that direction. And the other thing was that there were not too many careers. So there were very few career choices at that time. But now there are hundreds of career choices. Correct. Correct. So people should use these programs where multiple uh, specialists come and tell their pro uh, pros and cons of their career. It may not be the final word on uh, what you choose, but you at least get a glimpse of what they did in their Correct. careers. So it's a fantastic forum and I hope uh, recordings are available for uh, children when they go to the class 12 so that they really go through some of the careers and see what people have done uh, in various aspects and then decide what they have to choose. Thank you. Thank you so much for the kind words, Dr. Bilbir Singh and welcome on the board once again. Okay, Dr. Bilbir, you left school in 1977 and went into the medical field. Please tell us how and what exams you took in those days and you said already how different it is today and how different it was that time. So please tell us your journey. Yeah. Right. So uh, my journey was very clear. When I was very good at maths and uh, physics and chemistry. So my mind used to be on the uh, applications and engineering sites because yesterday, Neelam, if you have uh, seen the WhatsApp of our group, Yes. Uh, 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 Gurmeet posted yeah, that uh, Balbir was a genius in math, so I was. And I remember uh, Mr. Verma was our teacher, and he would uh, sometimes leave the chalk and the board when there is a difficult question and say that I'm getting into little confusion. Balbir, why don't you come and uh, oh, do something? Oh, wow. So I remember this. So I was very keen on maths. So it was uh, looks looked very obvious that I would choose engineering. Yeah. Now there came a confusion. Um, uh, my father thought that, you know, um, medicine is something which goes to uh, interacting with human life and um, making some impact. Engineering is treating mechanical things. And he put in my mind, I was not great at biology. I will tell you that uh, story also. Oh, I was not so okay. great, but I thought, that okay, my parents were very keen that I should become a doctor rather than engineer. Wow. So, and getting into medicine at that time was not so easy. It was quite difficult. And um, I remember that uh, I was with Vipul in the pre-med uh, college and we were going to a coaching classes and Vipul was there last Sunday we had lunch together. And Vipul was reminding uh, me of that. And uh, we, uh, uh, kind of had decided that I'm not going to try for engineering at all, uh, even though I had got in, but I will not do. And I took the medical entrance and it was very tough at the time. So my uh, choice was Delhi. Um, I wanted to stay in Delhi. I didn't want to go out of Delhi. So MAMSI was the number one choice. Correct. And I thought, okay, so my parents influenced me in choosing my career at that time. And I said, okay. Uh, so I remember uh, my result was out. At that time, there was no internet, there was no computers. Correct. So somebody had to go physically and see the result. Mm. So my friend called me up, that result is out, will you come and see? I said, I don't have the guts to go and see the entrance result because this is life and death for me. Correct. So my, I told my father and he said, okay, I will go. And uh, till the time he had not seen the result, I was racing up and down the terrace, <laughs> thinking what will happen if I don't get <laughs> so <laughs> finally, I was ninth in All India, uh, wow. uh, wow. All India entrance. So Namsi was showed to me, and uh, that changed my life. So after that, um, I started developing a huge good interest in medicine. So I can tell you one thing that uh, by saying that you got better marks in English, so you did not get better marks in physics, makes no sense at all. Okay. Mind is the same. The IQ is the same. It is okay. how you adapt that to that particular field. Suppose okay. your aptitude is towards becoming an engineer and you think you didn't get good marks in maths because you do not apply yourself in that subject. If okay. you're very good at English, you can be good at maths also. It's just okay. that you didn't apply. 
a good painter can be a good doctor a good doctor can be a good painter also it is just how you approach your life so medicine now we understand is like painting uh, the surgical aspects particularly it's just like a painter so a good painter can be a good doctor a good surgeon also a good surgeon can be a good painter wow. so how you apply yourself is what really ends up in becoming the life so it's the iq and your aptitude which matters the most brilliant i think brilliant answer i would say brilliant okay tell me doctor believe after you became a doctor uh when you were handling your first operation please tell us about about that you know how you felt and was it successful or was it not not successful how did you feel that time neeram you asked a wonderful question i have never told this story to anybody <laughs> but i'll tell you so after, after i finished my um, education and my degrees i got into all india institute as a faculty and um, i was quite young at that stage about 30 years in age which is quite young for a medical profession so i got into medicine now you are uh, independent and you have to treat patients independently and you now go into the um, area where you have a patient and you have to do perform a surgery independently okay. so i used to have a bike at that point in time so i finished my surgery uh, so i was doing very slow there were three surgeries i finished at 839 and uh, then i took my rounds kept with the patient so that i everything is fine before i leave at about 1030 i finish my uh, work and i finish my rounds and then go to the bike so my bike doesn't have any petrol in it so i couldn't start <laughs> so now i had to take a bus so in the dtc bus i still remember that day at that particular time that was probably the last bus which would have gone to my home i took that bus wow. and uh, when i was sitting in that bus i realized next to me sitting was the son of the patient whom i had operated and he said doctor sab sab theek ho gaya <laughs> I, i said ha sab theek ho gaya wow. but i also must admit Uh, that uh, if i recollect those days i had a bike and uh, in winters we had to reach the hospital at 8 o'clock so i used to leave my home at 7:15 and those winter days in delhi with no pollution used to be really cold and a bike or a scooter the bl- the wind used to blow in your face so i was discussing with my daughter that you know you remember i had a bike and uh, i used to drive um 10 15 kilometers in that cold and um, and if i now see that i of course have a, a nice car nice big car very luxurious <laughs> but the fact is the fact remains was i happy then or no i would oh. i said i was happy then so it was very clear that money does not get you happiness oh. very very it's yeah. your work which gets you happiness wow wow that's We a used- brilliant answer that's a brilliant answer you it's really nice to hear that and that have your first operation was it successful yes it was oh nice <laughs> fortunately uh, that patient still follows up with me uh, 23 years hence wow. you yeah, because you know the, the 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 first step like for the child the first step is the most important and for a doctor yes. the first operation is very important right so i'll tell you a very uh, interesting story so a friend of mine who also was doing his first surgery he was uh, Uh, the doctor was from bihar and he was a very naive kind of a person so he went to the table and said to the patient dekhi bhai sahab ye mera pehla surgery hai aaj the patient got a shock of his life and he said doctor sahab mujhe bhi maaf kar do mere liye bhi pehli hai <laughs> brilliant brilliant oh, yeah <laughs> brilliant nice nice okay Uh, Dr. Bulvi, you have been conferred with so many prestigious awards and facilitations from time to time. It's almost become periodic now for you. Can you inspire our young children, you know, our students, how they can shape up their lives, taking you as a role model? Okay, so you know, awards are an important uh, structure because they give you a lot of um, happiness and they give you uh, impetus that you have been rewarded for something good. So you want to do something mm-hmm. better. So my Correct. appetite. is not satisfied even though i may have won so many so many awards i still want to win more so there is no end to winning awards wow. but i'll tell you one another important story in life what an award means to a person 
So I have been awarded with a Panshri. So Panshri uh, is a big award to have and uh, it's very respectable to get it from the government. Right. But somebody uh, on a dinner where I was drunk, so every truth would come out, ask me that, how do you feel that such a great award? I said, this is not the greatest award I got. I got something bigger. So he, which is not uh, on, uh, uh, there is no certificate for that, but there's a bigger award. So they said, what? So I was at All India Institute. So I was, uh, Dr. Venugopal was the head uh, then, and Venugopal is a great man, yeah. there is no doubt. Correct. Very interesting person. Correct. So he had operated on one patient who was not doing well. So I was on call that night. Um, so I was called in to their ICU to see why that patient is not doing well. Wow. So I did some uh, imaging tests on the patient and I told uh, the team uh, of Dr. Venakopal that please take him back to the OT. There's a clot sitting on it, which is pressing it. So you will be able to open and save the patient. The patient was in bad shape. Uh, the doctor on duty said, boss, this is Dr. Venagopal ka patient. If you said it wrong, then you have to stay in the middle. I said, I think I have said it wrong. I have said it wrong. So they took the patient in the patient at middle of night and operated and found a clot and the patient wow. survived. And wow. he came off the ventilator and in a fish. Wow. A week later, uh, I get another call from the ICU. So getting a call from a surgical ICU is always you have to rush. So I took off my shoes and there were no OT slippers. So I rushed with bare foot into the ICU to look at the patient. So I was looking at the patient and Dr. Venugopal walks in uh, with slippers in his hands and gave me those slippers. So that was a award to me from a person who had done the first heart transplant. And I consider that to be a bigger than a Panchu because it was a person who's amazing. And he was an amazing, he brought lot of things to the uh, what we are now brilliant. to this country brilliant 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 i would say okay uh, tell me uh, dr balbir that you are a known specialist in cardiology and you are also on the advisory pa panel of several international societies what does your typical day look like is it taxing and over demanding uh, well, it is very demanding, uh, extremely demanding, because cardiology uh, is a life and death. Correct. Patients do not give a time also sometimes. And uh, I will not shy to tell you that we make sometimes make serious mistakes uh, and uh, which are beyond us because every procedure has some complication rate. So if uh, there is a success rate of 99%, there'll be 1% who will get into trouble. But that really hurts us. You know, we have to spend some sleepless nights if such a thing happens. Yeah. So you have to be very careful. And every time you go in, you eyes closed and you uh, try to recollect what you're going to do. You think of all complications that can happen yeah. and then go in. And you know that there is a life on the table for you every time you go into the theater. So yeah. it is a tough branch, but it is very exciting, very rewarding. Uh, in terms of the happiness that you get when the patient gets well. So there is correct. no doubt about it. Correct, correct. But this, it, it, is a, it is an endless struggle, I would say. Endless struggle, you know. Okay, how do you, Dr. Sir, balance your personal professional life here? Do you also sing and dance, like dance on the tunes of Bollywood? So um, I wish uh, you were here when we had our dinner party. You weren't in India. That time you would have seen what fun we had, the batchmates of us. <laughs> and I've offered uh, another dinner party <laughs> during Holi. Wow. So I there. love music. Yeah. Uh, so I love music. I love uh, singing. I love drinking. Wow. So, <laughs> so all this is there. So I, I think uh, it's so important for every human being. So as Aristotle said, that if somebody does not like music, he can only be a donkey. Yeah. <laughs> well said, well said, well said. Okay, you made historic achievements in the field of cardiology. Can you tell us your favorite memory when you have, when, as a, as a cardi cardiologist, any favorite memory of yours? One so there are, uh, yeah. So there could be many, but the most favorite is to win an award on the international table. So two of them I still remember. One was I did a live case uh, to America from here. 
uh, which was one hour display on an American uh, conference where it was watched by about 2000 uh, cardiologists from all over the globe, including many from America. Wow. So it was a one hour performance, which was from my hospital. That time I was in Medanta and it was performed live. And I got huge appreciation uh, messages wow. from America. And uh, they said that it was a very good teaching experience from them. And we were operating live on a patient and the patient was very happy and gave a consent for being uh, shown uh, to a big conference in America. So the conference was TCT and I had done this case in 2016. Yeah, yeah. The second one was I award uh, I got in an international meeting was uh, in 2018, which was uh, the best late breaking clinical trial in the globe for that year, 2018. Wow. So we had done a, a trial and brought out something very interesting. It was a global trial. There were many other centers in the world. I was a leading investigator, so I presented that trial. Wow. And I won that award um, over uh, French... Uh, American, British, uh, so many countries are also presenting. And uh, this was won by a huge margin. So that was another great thing. So I would think, uh, uh, you know, that we are still uh, far behind uh, the international scene in cardiology from the world. It's not because we don't have those intellect or we don't have that kind of dedication in our cardiology. It's because the procedures are very expensive. Uh, we, our health system is still a very small percentage of the GDP. And the government is not able to invest so much. So uh, we cannot do many cutting edge procedures because of the cost and uh, many other things. The second thing is that uh, technologically, we are not doing too much research into producing some um, ingenious products, which is another big factor, which why we are behind. So, you know, sometimes I tell my colleagues, you know, look at our creative team. They go and beat Australia, they beat England. Why can't as cardiologists, we be better than Americans? <laughs> So it is just because uh, we have not got that um, push because of our um, GDP correct. spending into health budget. Correct, correct. Okay, given the way technology is racing ahead and with AI virtual reality, what changes do you foresee in your line and in your profession? So one big thing that is going to change is that we've been witnessing uh, in the last one year uh, conferences which are happening virtual, hmm. right? And I can tell you, like we are sitting uh, across uh, uh, so many kilometers and discussing as if we are sitting on across the table. So many conferences will ultimately become virtual. Hmm. Another thing that I tell you, which is happening for uh, me, is that I could tie up Max uh, Cardiology with Mayo Clinic Cardiology. So what is it going to look like? So what is it? So it will be a Max Mayo Clinic Cardiac Center. Wow. So what does it mean? that they are million, uh, so many kilometers away from us sitting in America. So what does it mean? So it means that we can do cases here and have them watch uh, virtually and we can interact with each other wow. and um, learn from each other. We can have clinical grand rounds together. They're presenting their case. We are presenting our case. And it, the world becomes very smaller. So this is going to take in a very big way. And I'm sure internet facilities and uh, computers will become much better than what they ever were. So these are the good virtues of having Corona. I think the Corona has taught us <laughs> that how, how the world can become so small by uh, internet and Correct. artificial intelligence. Correct. So technology, uh, things will really boom and you will see artificial intelligence into medicine in a huge, big way. AI will tell us that use this procedure, not that procedure. Treat this patient okay. like this wow. rather than that. Wow. Wow, this is a real development, I would say. Especially when people are, you know, depressed because of Corona. We're not, not able to meet each other, you know. But I think more than that, there'll be a technological changes, which are very, very right. important, I think. Very important. Right. Okay. Tell me, doctor, a doctor sees pain, death, suffering on the daily basis, but they provide only care and cure as dedicated to healing. To provide a possible cure, please tell us, a good and healthy body is a reason behind a healthy mind. What is what are the health tips you would like like to give to the youth today? Okay, so we know for sure that heart disease is preventable. So we also know the youth is in trouble. Uh, youth is in trouble because, uh, as I was discussing with somebody, that when I was young, there were no targets. I didn't have key. I have to do so much work. I will get this much money. The targets. 
people who are into multinational companies and into IT and many other engineering aspects, right. they get so much stress of work. They smoke. Their every dinner is outside. They are in bars, pubs, and uh, it is. Uh, I treated a 25-year-old boy with a heart attack only two weeks back. Oh my. I mean. This was unheard of about 10 years or 15 years back. There are 25 years old. So this lifestyle is very dangerous. India is becoming the capital of uh, heart disease very soon. It has already become the capital in the world of diabetes. We have to reverse this process. We have to exercise. We have to di- take our diet it's very seriously. Correct. Correct, correct. I think the youth especially because they are into McDonald's and you know they are into all insipid eating. And that insipid, insipid eating is your, your insipid mind, ultimately, if you ask me, you know. Okay, how lucrative, Dr. Saab, is this uh, profession? Because a doctor, uh, I think, compared to other professions, is, is not paid that, that amount which is worth, worth for. Right. So uh, should we use our career to decide that this profession gives more money or not is a big important question. After all, money is also important. I will remember what uh, my father told me when I was using my career, which may be helpful and even right even now. He said two things about the medical profession. He said, <laughs> so, which I still remember. And second is, why do they retire? So, life to life ke end to be calm mein lage rahe And he said, ki, Aakhri din tak bhi kaam karna apni life mein. which is another true fact. And these are the two things which a doctor, you cannot deny a doctor. But I can tell you, as I already said, money is not everything in life. Doc- medicine profession has a lot of challenges, uh, but it is a lot of happiness also. And uh, uh, during the Corona times, um, people have come very close to uh, looking at hospitals, medical profession, and it is quite exciting. You would have already seen that there is a lot of excitement. Who could imagine that a medical profession could make a vaccine within nine months, which is 91% efficacious, and will turn around the whole uh, uh, system and turn around. So there is excitement. Yes, it cannot be as paying as what you may, uh, Neeram, you may uh, uh, in HR would be making yes. can't <laughs> so that i agree so but what we still have a lot of happiness a lot of excitement and a human life to treat a human life treatment and being happy treating your patients and the kind of uh, response they give is amazing correct correct it is it is it is your mindset i think it's your mindset how you make it and how you adapt like you said in the beginning so you have to adapt yourself to given situations Right. So Neelam, I was at Delhi Golf Club uh, with our batchmate Shalu, Amod, Sushil, Vipul, Uma. So Sushil and Vipul, I said, you know, I, even if uh, I try to put zeros at to how much Vipul and Sushil have earned uh, from my, I don't even know. I will have to multiply by thousand, ten thousand, one lakh times. I don't know how much you would have earned and how much I would have earned. Sushil and Vipul said, Doc, uh, what you have earned, we can't earn. We would respect you much more than, than what you should. So money is not the final thing. So you should think of excitement also in life. But I agree, uh, money wise, uh, if for a doctor, it's not so easy um, because it is not a commercial business. Sometimes patients are poor and we have to even give up our fees. And uh, this is truth and uh, we have to work with the truth. Correct, correct. And do you think, Dr. Sir, they, are there any characteristics and you, traits you think a, a, a person should have to join medicine? Yeah, so two or three things he should be prepared when they join medicine. That is a lot of hard work. You have to be very dedicated to the profession. You cannot cheat your patients. Patients need you. They are sick. They need you. The moment you start um, taking it easy, you are going to be in trouble. So it needs a lot of hard work. And reading and learning never ends in this profession. It is The day I decide I'm not going to read or not attend conferences, not learn from others, I am finished. So it is an ever-learning and reading process. So you... You have to be prepared for this if you take up medicine. Correct, correct, correct. So if you turn the clock back in your profession, what do you like to be? A doctor again or some other profession? 
Okay, so if I turn the clock back and you tell me that, look, I, uh, you look at Sushil, look at Vipul, that um, <laughs> they just did become and then took up a consultant job and this and that, and you struggled and struggled for many years reading, I would still uh, choose medicine. I would still choose medicine. Oh, wow. And uh, after joining medicine, I chose, within my third year, I chose that I want to become a cardiologist. Wow. And uh, which is... Oh, yeah, so because I thought this is really exciting, very exciting. So when I did a round and saw the cardiac patients, I said, this is very exciting and you can really save lives. So I was sure I want to become a cardiologist. So I would still continue to think same that I want to do medicine and do cardiology. I may choose to um, have spent more time abroad because that's what I didn't do. And uh, I spent only one year abroad. I may choose again if I... If the clock runs back, I may choose four or five years abroad before wow, I come back. Wow, 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 brilliant, brilliant. The only difference. Brilliant. Okay, finally, what advice you would like to give it to the students? That's one. Second, to the, pre to, to the doctors of today, you know, how do you feel that, uh, you know, what they should do, you know, in life to become better and best doctors? Right. So the, if the uh, school children are listening to me, class 12 children, uh, if you want to do medicine, there are two or three things you have to have prerequisite of. You have to have the prerequisite of learning, learning and learning. Wow. B, um, use your mind, IQ, creativeness. So it is not, if you say that you can, you are good at painting, so you cannot become a doctor. You will become a good doctor if you are a good painter also. You have to have that creativity in medicine. You have to put your experience and then decide the treatment for a patient. And it is challenging because the patients are very demanding. They want to get better and you cannot uh, get everybody normal or better. That is challenges are there, but challenges are there in every field. But yes, there is a lot of hard work. There could be a lot of stresses of patients getting, uh, you're treating unwell patients, treating emergencies, but it is a lot of happiness when you get a patient fine uh, who was dying and it gives the family and uh, you a, a very big push in life. So, and as I said, money is not everything. So don't choose a career because there is more money in one career than another. Choose your mind. If you think that excitement and you can create something, take much. Thank you very much. I must say this comes to the end of the program, Dr. Sir. I think it was brilliant. Now, a little appreciation package for you. Dr. Bulbi, you studied to save lives because only a doctor can teach how to love life. A truly amazing doctor, which is hard to find and impossible to forget. Rated the best doctor who gives the least medicine to strongly believe in. Only a life lived for others is a life worthwhile. And God cannot be everywhere. So he sent doctors like you, Dr. Bulbi, with ex excellence and selflessness. Thank you very, very much for coming. I think it was such a brilliant, brilliant experience interacting with you. Thank you so much. And now over to Rajiv now. Rajiv would like to, uh, like to ask you something. Yeah. You know, sir, I, I listened to you very, very intently, very, yes. very carefully. <laughs> You know, when I came to DPS in class uh, nine again, I was supposed to go in uh, for medicine. Um, you know, my mother wanted me to become a doctor, but I think I didn't have, you know, the requisite marks to get into science stream. So I, I went into commerce and I became a chart accountant. But after listening to you, one thing which has really struck me, I mean, apart from your accolades, apart from your awards, apart from your dedication, the line I've just written down is that you would like to spend more time overseas yeah. before you come back. So uh, your coming homecoming uh, is something which has really touched my heart. Oh. <laughs> so many of my batch who are uh, superlatively, uh, you know, superlative doctors in the U.S. and probably you would know some of them also. Uh, Sir Dinesh Gupta and all these, they were all 76 oh, batch and they're all in the U.S. now doing phenomenally well. But before I come back, that has really touched my heart. I'm very uh, happy to hear and thankful that such people like you also decide to come back to India and serve the people here. And this, uh, I will say, it, we are still a poor country. You know, we don't have enough money. Uh, we don't have enough. A lot of people don't have. And 
a lot of people would not be alive had it not been for good people like you, who sometimes have to forego their fees, who sometimes have to forego a lot of other uh, things, you know, just to be able to treat the patient. So that's that's what I had to say to you, sir. And I think I love. Thank you, Haji. Haji, you were saying saying something. Dr. Yeah, Kandji. I was thanking both of you for uh, having me here on the show, and I, I hope I can give. I can hope that the 12th class children do uh, understand that it's a good profession to be in and uh, um, and they will be rewarded in one way or the other. Right. And right. should not choose a profession based on the money that it makes. Correct. You know, Correct. Rajiv, I can tell you that there may be some CAs who may not be that well off. There may be some CAs who earn so much more. So it is sure. not every profession is bound that CA, if you become a CA, you will earn a lot. Correct. It's not... Correct. It's not true, sir. That's right. Correct. Absolutely. Correct. The, the, the best thing about you, Dr. Billy, which I loved it, which I still remember, that a, a painter can be a doctor. You know? Because, you know, that's something that you, you, you can't do if you really want to do, that will to do it, which is really inspiring for children of today, you know? They should have the will and the vitality, mm -hmm. you know, to go forward and do wonders, you know, like you've done wonders in your life. Yes. I think you made everybody proud. I think... Uh, we're, when I talk about cardiology, when I talk about Dr. Bilbeer, people raise their eyebrows, oh, he's your classmate, oh, he's your batchmate. <laughs> you know, so it's, it's, it's a great honor, I think. So with this, thank you very much for coming, Dr. Bilbeer, and spending your, I tell you, your precious time with us. Thank you very, 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 thank very so much. much. Thank Bye -bye. you. Bye -bye. Thank you, sir. And thank you, viewers. Thank you, Rajiv. And thank you, all my children, my participants, everybody who is here. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Shabba Khair. As of now, this is Neelam signing off. Bye-bye. I'm uh, Brigandra K. Singhal. Uh, I'm an electronics and telecom computer uh, specialist. I'm 80 years old and I'm uh, still working at a consulting firm. I had the ICT practice. I had had a chance encounter with Dr. Balbir Singh. But when we were uh, leaving his chamber on the 10th of November, uh, I suddenly felt very uneasy and then I toppled over. He was referred to me by my colleague, Dr. Amrish Mittal, who is treating his diabetes, for a review of his cardiac problems because he was having breathlessness on exertion and was not feeling well. So when I saw him first in the OPD, he had a block on the ECG, which was a, a conduction system block. Some fibers of the conduction wire were not working well. We got an echo done, which shows his aortic valve was not functioning well. He had an aortic valve stenosis. And his kidney had a problem because his creatinine was high. So we were dealing with multiple problems and I was thinking of how best to treat him. So I was discussing with him that we have to do some procedures, we have to do a pacemaker, we'll have to replace his valve non-surgically and then go about um, seeing how he does. So all this was planned and uh, with the family, I told them the problems of not doing and problems of doing all the risks were discussed and a date was mutually discussed between the family and us and we fixed a date. The moment uh, everything was done and he was about to leave the room, he collapsed. After that, uh, I completely passed out. All I hear was sounds of Mr. Singhal, Mr. Singhal, Mr. Singhal. He collapsed because his heart had stopped functioning and there was no blood to the brain and he collapsed and fell on the chair itself. Fortunately, he was still in my OPD. He had not gone out of the room. I am told now that I was virtually gone. If he had been out of the room, I don't know how we would have saved him. But maybe if we would have saved him in the hospital, but not when he, if he was in his car. Uh, in fact, by the way, the same thing happened with my wife. When uh, she was consulting him, she also sort of felt uneasy and she also collapsed. Uh, more or less in front of him. When this happened, we gave him cardiac massage, took him straight to the cath lab, inserted a temporary pacemaker, which was followed by a permanent pacemaker on the same day. Having done that, um, we looked at his kidneys, uh, uh, kidney treatment was started. And at that stage, 
now we were planning the next step which was the valve replacement so the valve replacement was done after about 10 15 days when his pacemaker part was completely settled and well now we knew that we had a safe patient to take for a tower we did his tower he did extremely well his heart has become completely normal he's not feeling any breathlessness he's back to routine work routine activities in fact seeking permission to go for his morning walks which i said except for covid there is no other fear his kidneys have started behaving better his sugars are under control and uh, we really feel that um, the technology and the advancement in the medical field really can save many more human lives than what we possibly are doing dr singh and his team really took care of us like we were family um, for which i'm grateful and i'm sure and i observe that he does this with all his patients he's treated us like his own rather than just a doctor doctor singh i must admit has given us both a second lease of life and i joke with everybody now that our birthdays are 26th october and 10th november we are virtually reborn in the hands of dr singh virtually we born in the hands of him we were both gone we wouldn't be speaking to you main saaket mein main admit hui thi ek choti si minor brain surgery ke liye aur jab uske dauran mujhe pata chala जब यहाँ पर कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट वगैरह के सब टेस्ट हुए कार्डियोलॉजी के तो पता चला कि मेरे हार्ट में प्रॉब्लम है और मेरा हार्ट की बीट जो है वो स्टॉप हो जाती है कुछ सेकंड के लिए तो मेरे को डॉक्टर बलवीर सिंह से जो मेरे कार्डियोलॉजिस्ट यहाँ पर हैं उनसे मेरी मुलाकात हुई सो मिसिज झुंझुन वाला केम वेन द कोविड सिचुएशन वॉज रियली बैड इन डेली एंड शी केम इज एन एमरजेंसी बिकॉज शी है and had a fall in february and when the neurologist did a ct scan found that it was a brain hemorrhage they needed to operate she was operated unhone bahut achhi tarah se unke sath main badi comfortable feel kiya kyunki unhone jab bhi maine time manga phone karke baat karne ka ya video conferencing karne ka mere apne doubts clear karne ka kyunki main sochti thi ki us umar mein face mein kar lagwa kar ke kya hoga agar nahi lagwaun to uske repercussion kya honge तो उन्होंने बहुत अच्छी तरह से जवाब दिया कि रिपरकशन तक बात किसी ने पूछी नहीं आपकी लाइफ बिल्कुल नॉर्मल रहेगी कभी भी आप कहीं भी जा सकती हैं प्लेन में जा सकती हैं जैसी आपकी एक्टिविटी थी वही सब रहेंगे आप सब कुछ कर सकती हैं और आपको महसूस भी कुछ नहीं होगा शी डिड वेल आफ्टर द सर्जरी बट देन वी वर कॉल्ड इन टू इन्वेस्टिगेट एज टू वाई शी फेल बिकॉज देर सम चेंजेस विच रियली मेड मी थिंक that maybe that was the reason why she fell and had the brain hemorrhage and that was operated so when we investigated her further i found that she her heartbeat used to stop and used to go into a, what is called as asystole when the heart stops working and there was no circulation to the brain at those times to jab main mais mein aayi to uske pehle main bahut hichhichaa rahi thi kyunki covid ka jo chal raha hai ka cases to itne badh rahe hain delhi mein तो मैंने सोचा कि ये इस वक्त हॉस्पिटल जाना ठीक नहीं रहेगा इसके लिए मैंने दो चार दिन डिले भी किया लेकिन इमरजेंसी हो गई कि मेरे हाथ से चम्मच नहीं गिर गया और उठाया नहीं गया मैं सिग्नेचर नहीं कर पा रही थी उस इमरजेंसी में मुझे यहाँ पर डिसाइड करना पड़ा कि मैं यहाँ पर आऊँ अगर शायद ऐसा नहीं होता तो शायद मैं और डिले करती और उससे मुझे बहुत नुकसान हो सकता था so i was very confident that even at the age of 94 i'll be able to finish the surgery fast so we implanted a, a leadless pacemaker with local anesthesia with no stitches no cuts on her body and the procedure time was about 15 to 20 minutes and she was back to her room the same evening and started walking in the evening yahan par mujhe bahut acha laga ki doctors bahut personal interest leke bahut dhairya purvak samjhate hain ki agar aapko koi doubt hai wo sab doubt aapka dur kar dete hain नर्सिंग स्टाफ बहुत ही अच्छा था बहुत ही केयर करते थे अटेंडेंट भी बहुत अच्छे थे कभी भी बेल बजाओ इमीजिएट आते थे 
रात हो कि या दिन हो और उनका बिहेवियर सबका बड़ा स्वीट था और बहुत ही अच्छा था मैंने आई आर आई एम वेरी अप्रिशिएटिव ऑफ ऑल दैट